Hey, everybody. So in this clip, I want to give you just a little bit of background um, and instruction on using in-text citation. And I want to make sure that I, I frame this by saying that this is by no means an exhaustive list of how to use in-text citations. It doesn't cover all of the rules. We're certainly going to talk about this more when we get into um, our second unit, which will be our fourth unit, <laughs> our second major uh, essay. Um, starting the week of the 29th. But for right now, I think it's useful to understand really what in-text citations do and just make a point that every time we're using the words of somebody else, that we indicate that those words are somebody else's by putting them in quotation marks and making sure that the author's last name is at the end. Now, we're all using the same four texts. We're reading Emily S. Fahani Smith. We're reading Will Store. We're reading... Um, Sean Aker, and we are reading Mark Manson. I always forget one of them. Um, so we're reading those four. And so you're not going to have any unique uh, work cited that you're going to be citing, um, as far as I know, unless you have something you're adding, which is fine. Um, but I say that because when we when I come back uh, and join you on the 29th before the papers do, we'll take a look at what a works cited page looks like and what you need to do to complete that. And so um, in the interim, it's good to just get in the habit of making sure that you're keeping track of where the quotes come from, specifically if you have a print resource. So that would be for Mark Manson, um, that would be for uh, Will Storm, although both were found online. So um, it's kind of a middle. So I'm gonna pull up, let me share my screen quickly. And as I said, I'm not, this isn't gonna be exhaustive. This is just to give you something so that you know what to do um, as you're going through your essay. Okay. So let me go back to my document here that we've been working on. So I'm going to give this a name because I'm going to lose it if I don't. This is going to be um, ENG 103-664 Sandbox. And I like to call it Sandbox just because um, it differentiates, you know, once I have a finished draft. And so you could already see in what I did in this, and I'm going to take the colors off so, you, so it looks more... Um, legible. But you can see right here, right? Um, I'm introducing the author, Will Store in his essay, A Better Kind of Happiness. So when I introduce the author, really to put the author's last name at the end here is redundant because I'm already telling um, you who wrote this. I'm telling you what the title is. I'm giving you a lot of background information. But a good thing to keep in mind is that it's net, you can never have too much citation, right? There's never too much signaling. And so if you're erring on the side of having too many citations, you're probably, uh, you're probably safe. And this is something that as you move through your, your academic experience, as you go through different classes, you're going to find professors who are all over the map in terms of what they expect. Um, you know, and, and some people go as far, you know, this is important, but some people go as far as um, saying that they'll take off um, you know, a point for each citation error that they find, or, you know, they, they won't accept papers without uh, correct MLA or APA style citation. But really what site all you're doing for citation is you want to introduce your quote. There's a couple ways to do that. It's called signposting. So according to Emily S. Fahani, Smith, um, even though I believe this is a direct quote, even though uh, standards of living are at an all-time high, 
um, people feel adrift. So now, because I've give, I've used this author's name, I don't really need to put the author's last name in the page number here. And because this is a TED Talk, there is no page number. So I'm going to put Esfahani Smith. And if there were page numbers, I would put the page number right here. No comma, no parentheses. And so really what we're doing when we have an in-text citation like this is we're directing people to the end of the essay um, so that they can find where to look for our sources. Another way to think about uh, in-text citation is with a, with a um, inline uh, signal phrase. So it would be like Emily S. Fahani Smith argues that, and what you do in this case is you make the author's words sound like they're part of your sentence, right? So that her words and your words merge. Another way that you can think about uh, quotation is you cannot put the author's last name, right? Let's say you've already described the author earlier in the paragraph and you wanna say something to the effect of, um, as many would suspect, I'm gonna put a quote here, Storytelling allows us to make decisions about how we read the events of our life. I know I'm skewing her quote, but let's just say I have it right here, <laughs> right? So we're introducing the quote, and in this point, it would be really important to have the author's last name here because we are just using that author's language. And we can do this because we are attributing this source. It's not like we're trying to take credit for what this person says. We're using this language because it um, is effective and it tells our story and it, it cuts to the point. Um, and when, then when we signal, that builds the trust of our reader, right? Because it's not just our word for it, We've done our research and we've called in experts. So if I come back, let's see, let's stop sharing. If I, um, if I come back to my main point, the, the most important aspect of in-text citation right now is making sure that you have quotes around words that aren't yours and that you tell whose words, in fact, they are. If you're doing those two things, uh, you're, you don't have anything to worry about in this first essay. And we're going to spend more time experimenting with different ways to use quotes as we move into our second essay. If you have any questions about this, don't hesitate to reach out.